What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode with your boy Franklin. If this is your first time, thank you for stopping by. This is story time. Story time is basically a segment where uh, you know people send me their stories to my email address, foodchannel1960 at gmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, look in the description below and you will find my email address. So basically people send me their stories and if it resonates well with me, I convert them to a pre-recorded content like this or a live stream you know, session on my channel. So it was a gentleman that sent me this email and um, it's been for a while, but he wants me to um, share his um, story with the viewers, all right? So, but before I crack on, um, for those of you that, you know, been watching me for a while, you probably know this. Um, in my previous video, I talked about the Franklin podcast, okay? Um, basically, I'm looking to set up my podcast you know, channel. I've already set it up, but I need to get some very important, you know, podcasting um, equipment in order for me to have a good sound quality and good, you know, production. So at the very least, there are certain equipments that are required. Okay. So I set up a GoFundMe, which the link is quite, you know, private, but you can access it and stuff. I want to say thank you to th those of you that have already contributed. Uh, I appreciate you. So, but we've still got a long way to go. So if you're feeling lucky, you'd like to support the donations for um, the equipment that I need to, you know, get the podcast going, please look in the description below. Look at the pinned comments. That's the comment at the top of all comments. Hit on the GoFundMe link and, you know, show your love, man. I'd really, really appreciate your help so I can get this uh, podcast uh, production going and I can provide you guys with more content and have a lot more reach with what I'm doing on my channel. And, um, yeah, if you want to support, you can also use my cash app. There's a link in the description. It's pound sign Franklin or via PayPal. All the information is in the description below. Right. Now that that's out of the way. So, this brother basically moved here. He's been married for, um, what, roughly 12 years now. Life was great. Life was going good when everything started. Um, and then eventually, um, you know, life as you depreciate, life is full of highs and lows, right? So, at some point, he basically, he was working, as he explained, in the IT field. Um, here in the UK and then at some point unfortunately um, he lost his job this was way before the pandemic right he lost his job and um, many in finances you know earnings plummeted and all that stuff and um, so it was became quite challenging and as you'd appreciate when people lose their you know job it depending on how long it takes before you then find another one it's usually beneficial if it's maybe within a month or something you find another one and you get back into the job market i mean you know carry on working but you know the longer you take looking for work and all that you know the gap and gap and gap gets gets bigger so he said he lost his job of course Prior to that, he had to be of savings, uh, as you do, and stuff. So his wife knew it wasn't his fault. It's not like he got fired. Uh, some other stuff happened that led to the job coming to an end. So he was doing his best to try to get back into the you know job market and be able to get the next role. But unfortunately, he said job interviews were coming, but he didn't close you know, then there was one that he was very close to getting and unfortunately they called him after he was offered the role. Then they called him a couple of days later that the organization had decided to fill, uh, to fill that position internally, which, you know, is a lot more cost effective for the business and all that, which was devastating for him. So, and then after that episode, there was no more offers and stuff like that. So, but we said he had um, roughly 4,000 you know, 300 pounds saved uh, prior to his job loss. So the long and short was, um, you know, bills have to be paid, things like rent, council tax, feeding and stuff. They've got kids. And the brother, according to the email, you know, said, you know, he still did his bit, was supporting his wife. And then eventually the 4,000 plus he had in savings was, you know, got fully depleted. He had no money, he became broke. And of course, that exacerbated his frustrations, you know, level of stress. Because, you know, one of the worst things that can happen to a man is, you know, um, having your funds depleted, job loss, 
and things like that. That in itself is depressing. I'm, it's not even gender specific, but I'm just talking about you being a man, you know, it absolutely shatters your ego. It weighs you down. It drains you emotionally. So you get the gist, right? So anyway, this brother, so he said, um, over time, you know, really petty stuff that you wouldn't normally pay attention to and then was leading to arguments and stuff. So over time, before you know it, man, it was running to about nine to 10 months that he's been out of work. And then so his wife was in, in effect, you know, paying the bills and, and, and all that stuff. And then she started getting funny. She was having to, you know, foot the, the, the chunk of the bills and stuff like that. So long and short was he then found out that this woman has been having, you know, conversation with their so-called pastor. So now there was a bit of a friction between them. The brother claimed that he's not, even though he used to go to church, he's not religious, okay? The wife, absolutely religious, has mental chains and all that stuff that she's dealing with. So... He was already in the process of emancipating himself from mental slavery. He didn't really buy into a lot of the church-related doctrines and stuff. Of course, you're within your rights to have your beliefs. So they were already having a bit of a friction because he would go against too much church programs and demand for money and pointless donations and stuff. And the wife would always say, oh, we must give to God, we must give to church. Because, you know, they, they, there was a lot of mud slinging and then the wife would be taking a dig at him because, oh, she's the one pulling the weights now and all that stuff. And that's one of the things that exacerbates any issues that you might have because the moment attacks are being made about finance, oh, you're not contributing, I'm the one paying the bills, I'm the one doing this, you know, of course, the other person would want to talk back that, you know, when I was paying the bills, I wasn't less of a man, so because now I'm out of work, you're doing this and this and this, usual stuff within relationships. So, then the pastor of their church, but he wasn't really, he didn't really dig that pastor, they said he doesn't have a relationship with that pastor, he doesn't really like him. So, basically, his wife would be on the phone for a couple of hours, most nights with a pastor who'd be on the couch uh, talking and she had cut the woman, he had, sorry, he had cut the woman talking about personal stuff to the pastor. So the pastor basically, he said one night he hung out with a couple of friends, just socialized on an evening and then he came in. Kids were already in bed, so, and so the bedroom was upstairs and then whilst he was um, hanging his coat, he heard his wife talking in the bedroom, talking basically about their intimacy their sex within the marriage so the pastor was basically tearing this gentleman apart and saying to his wife that she, she shouldn't you know give him as much love making and stuff that oh if a sensible man is to go out and go and look for work and stuff basically telling the woman to deprive a husband of love making basically telling her that a husband is, isn't man enough so you can imagine that led to an explosive argument according to the email and stuff she disregarded him and she said he said his wife would disappear i'm going to pastor's wife pastor's missus house she would go to their house go and clean their home cook for them run errands for them leave him at home with the kids and the excuse is oh you're not working they're your children it gives you time to bond with them and then when she comes home she doesn't even fix any food for him and, and stuff like that, man. I think it's just absolutely nuts, you know. And um, so basically, this guy has no say. And it's reached a point where he said to me, this is what he said in the last paragraph. So Franklin, I don't know if I'm paranoid, but I've sort of reached a point where I, I'm actually thinking that my wife might be having an affair with these, you know, the said pastor and stuff like that. So he said, but he hasn't got, you know, the evidence is a, just so much jaw dropping, like unbelievable, that makes him start to think that there might be, you know, more than meets the eye and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, what kind of a woman gets on the phone to a pastor and discusses intimacy that another man dictates to you that you should make love to your man because your man is out of work. For me, that marriage is done. That's that's absolutely done. That's done. That's finished. That's the height of disrespect. But the truth is, and and and, and the man said, there's been many times where 
like late at night, he's in bed, she'll be downstairs on the couch on the phone talking to Pastor in the name of, of the guys trying to give her prayers and stuff. And they're talking and say, oh, Pastor, oh, you're so funny. And, and I'm like, wow. So it's led to so much argument that he he's at the verge of almost going to the pastor's house. And I said to him in an email that I was going to make the video, I said, be careful, it's a trap. Because if you go to his house and you go bang on the door, you're going to get done for harassment. You can get arrested. This is England, right? And then once you get criminal record by the police, that's your livelihood. That's your life done. You're toast. Okay? It's a trap. And it's a psychological warfare. I think it's a deliberate action by that pastor. He's trying to break you. He's trying to break your home. He probably has a concealed interest in that woman. So there will be no surprises if... You know, the pastor is actually piping down the, the man's wife. You know, these crazy extremities happen within the black community. And this is what I'm trying to close upon, right? Not to drag this out for too long. These are the ripple effects of religiosity. You know, these extremities when people are mentally chained, mentally trapped. You know, it's, it makes no logical sense. Makes no sense. It's the height of disrespect to even take, you know... Um, your details, details of your relationship and putting another man's and another man has so much control over you to be dictating, you know, that's game over for me, man. Dictating to you about um, allowing your partner to make love to you, man. Come on, man. That's, whoa. That's that's just crazy. That, that marriage is done. You know, how do you explain that? All of this is tied to the fact that the man is out of work and, and it's crazy. There's a lot of these women that do this and this is not women bashing, but I've got to say it, say it like it is, right? Because uh, these extremities, my pastor said, my pastor said, my pastor said, I, I've i been saying it for time. I'm against it, right? It's, it's a very, very common devilish and satanic practice within the black community. They've destroyed so many lives, so many homes, so many marriages all these religious charlatans, as I love to call them, you know, they they make up these lies as they go in, you know, the self-proclaimed men of God who are liars, you know. What kind of a man sits on the phone, you have your own wife, and um, you're talking to another woman, you're telling her she's in, intimate stuff, and um, you're doing everything to break her man, to break her home, and this woman... A woman that would leave her home, go cook for some pastor, nah man. I think the, the, the pastor is, is pounding her to dust. The pastor is thrusting into her, you know, sugar walls and basically piping her down. I, without a shadow of a doubt, man. That's, you know, I'm I'm deeply convinced. But, you know, this this brother said he's betwixt the croix. Uh, betwixt the croix. He's at, uh, in the middle of the crossroads, right? And um, But then there's a part of him that wants to break away from, 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 from the marriage. My man, if that's the way forward for you, you know, I, I don't want it to come across as, oh, Franklin is just soliciting for people too. But, but, but man, man, yo, your wife dumped kids on you and, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to pastor's house. You can't tell me what to do. Pastor wants me to come. I want to go see pastor. I want to go cook for pastor. The pastor has his wife. His wife can't cook for him in his own house, in, in his own home. My wife has to go cook for some... And these templates of existence, I have to conform and align with this. Who made these rules? I'm, I'm, anyway, let's keep the conversation going on below, man. If there is any sensible brother, you know, you see that you have a woman who religiosity is being you weaponized, used to intrude your home and try, you know, weaponize to control your home, Say no, put your foot down, man. And lastly, I want to say this. Um, I'm a big believer in if you're a man, you've got family, you've got kids, even if you're separated, right? Do what you got to do. Put bread on the table. Take care of your home. Do your very best. But look after yourself, man. Always put something away for just in case things go bananas, just like this. So you have something to fall back upon. So if you have to move on, I mean, that's an extreme. But if you have to move on, if everything goes absolutely bananas, so you can protect yourself, so you have something to fall back upon, because what happens to a lot of brothers is, um, regardless, okay, 
but there are situations out there where some men are left hanging they lose everything they've lost you know their, their finances are absolutely depleted they're broke and um the woman turns them to a doormat and they've left with nothing you dig and and it's like they're, they're left with depression they've got heart problems now they're frustrated they turn to alcohol you know everything just runs down and they, they end up on medications and you know they might even end up breaking the law then they end up getting getting locked up whilst that woman finds a younger dude you know piping her down and she pretty much moves on with the rest of her life and you are left at the bottom end of the spectrum with nothing that's the main point okay look after yourself it's very important take care of your home provide for your kids put bread on the table but never forget yourself build empire with your woman if you have to take care of yourself it's very important just in case listen the franklin podcast okay i need your support guys all right um look in the description like i said look in the link below show your love man all right uh, if you want to support me, you can also do that via my cash app, like I said earlier. All right. I want to get that podcast going, guys. Uh, thank you once again to those that have already contributed, all right, via um, GoFundMe link. Uh, look in the link below. You see that link and, you know, yeah. So that's that's me done. But I would love for you to carry on talking in the conversation section below, which is a comment section, all right. I'll catch you in the next one. Send me your stories to Food Channel 1960 at gmail.com yeah that's crazy man but hey this life is filled with unbelievable amount of complexities it's your boy franklin i'll catch you in the next one peace and love bye